I just spent $300 on seeds, so you don't have to. Let me show you what I got. All right, I just spent a whole lot of cash on these seeds from Baker Creek, and believe me, they're worth every single penny, but at the end of this video, I'm gonna teach you how you can save money on seeds and you don't have to spend $300. If you want to, you know, you do you. Okay, so let's go through what I purchased. I'm gonna tell you why I bought it, how I'm gonna use it, and, uh, and how you might wanna use it too. So I'm gonna divide these into categories as we go through to help it make more sense. So first I have nasturtiums, those are we're gonna go in the flower category. Chrysanthemum, also flower. I got tennis ball lettuce, super excited about that. Celery, Lunix lettuce, very excited. Kale, dwarf Siberian kale. I got some spinach, Monstro de Virofle. I'm sure that's French, I guess. We've got rutabaga, American purple top. We've got Mizuna, red streaks. We've got little finger carrots, ah, so cute. We've got more flowers, one of my favorites, Kilimanjaro marigolds, Merlot lettuce, day 18 jour. I don't know how to say 18 in French. I did at one point. I think it means 18 days until you get a radish. What? Now we've got Uzbek golden carrots. We've got solar flare lettuce. We've got winter choy, Chinese yellow heart. Then we've got chamomile, Calway golden. We've got spun orange marigold. I mean, is that gorgeous? Celosia, eternity mix. Celosia, kumquat orange. What? Lettuce, Landis winter. Mabuna, I used to say Mizuna, but this is Mabuna, it's different. Then we have, oh, they give us free seed when you spend like, you know, hundreds of dollars. This is St. Valerie. This is my favorite Rocky Top lettuce. I know you've heard me talk about that before. Now we got a Pusha Asita black carrot, another free seed, America sweet pea. All right, free seeds. This is Chinese narrow leaf lettuce, never grown this one before. This is Australian brown onion. This is Chiogia, I think that's the right way you say it, beets. Then we have something I can't say, lettuce. We have onion, Texas early grano, tong ho. This is chamomile? No, chrysanthemum, sorry. More Rocky Top, cannot get enough Rocky Top. Then we got some sugar daddy peas, Mizuna early. So now I have red Mizuna and green Mizuna. Look at these nasturtiums, cherry rose jewel, early Jersey Wakefield cabbage, some spinach, Bloomsdale longstanding, this, that's the best kind. French breakfast radishes, the easiest kind to grow. Where do they go? Where's those radishes that are like 18 days? There we go. Same family, so I got confused here. If I grow these, you guys, I'm literally gonna throw myself a party. Like if this actually comes out of the seed, I'm gonna be amazed. Golden beets, calendula, orange king. This is very easy to grow from seed. Cosmos, very easy to grow from seed. Beets, bull's blood, radishes, saxa too. Carrots, amarillo, chives, common. Almost through here, cabbage, court de boeuf. French breakfast radish, I got two of these. I like those a lot. Calendulas, chamomile. Can you see I'm on like a flower kick for this year? More bazoon, mazuna, they gave me these for free. This is called Benny Hoosh. Am I saying that right? I don't know, I don't think so. Coreopsis, arugula, super easy to grow. Everyone can grow arugula. Then we got more Cosmos. Look at that color. Bok choy, Swiss chard, another one of my faves. More peas, this time they're called Sugar Bond. Then we got some Manpukuji. Look at those, how long they are. There's this girl on Instagram that grows super long carrots and I'm just so jealous, so I had to try. Calendula, Snow Princess, Runner Beans. Oh, they're so pretty, black coat. Uh, more Swiss chard, this time it's called Five Color Silver Beet. Then we have Scarlet Kale, purple. We have a red cabbage. Can y'all imagine the colors in my garden if I actually make this happen? I thought this was so cute, Tom Thumb Lettuce. These cute little heads, they're gonna be awesome. Yarrow, I love yarrow. Cosmos, more Swiss chard, this one's orange. Bok choy, purple, I'm really going for the colors. Black radishes, pink carrots. Okay, I just had to do this. Like if I grow one of these, y'all, what in the world? Okay, this is Sapporo Giant number four. I swear, like if this is a real picture, then I don't know, I'm gonna die. Okay, Cosmic Crimson Mix. I thought this was such a pretty lettuce. 
one more kale dazzling blue. So I'm gonna have purple kale, green kale, and blue kale. Then I'm gonna have some May Queen lettuce, and finally, some slow bolt cilantro. So this, my friends, all adds up to be $300. Oh, there's a couple more. I knew I was missing a few things. We also have little gem lettuce, sweet peas, so it's just a flower, crisp mint lettuce, and then finally, in dive, which is Prise. Okay, so let me tell you why I ordered these, what I'm gonna do with them, and also how I divided these up, okay? So I am currently in the fall season in Nashville. It's like the highs are in the 60s, 70s. The lows, like there's a chance of frost, but it's not freezing every night. It just like drops down and then comes back up. Some of these things I can still be growing through the fall, but I'm mostly looking toward the new year with the majority of the seeds that I purchased. You can see most of the things I have are in like the cool season realm. I don't have any tomatoes, peppers, eggplant, squash, zucchini, cucumbers, bush beans. All those are for the season when it starts to warm up. So this is more for coolest parts of the year. So fall, winter, and spring. The way I divided this up is based on plant families. So first I have, oops, that's in the wrong place. First I have the onion family. So I've got chives and these onions. A lot of onions can be planted in the fall if you're in a mild place. So I can plant these onion seeds here in the garden right now, cover them up if things get really cold, but then they'll be have a head start for the spring. The chives are the same. All these lettuces, this is all in the aster family. Almost all these can be growing undercover throughout the winter in a mild climate like Nashville's. If you're in a colder place, you can still grow a lot of these under a cold frame or even in a greenhouse or like a poly tunnel kind of thing. And if you're in a warm place, then these can grow all winter long without protection. So all these lettuces give you tons of harvest. So let's say in this little package of seed, there's probably over a hundred seeds in this little package. And I'll probably be able to harvest, like if you think about like a salad box, I could harvest a salad box's worth of salad from this package probably 100 times at least 50 times that's one of the ways i start to value like whether the seeds are worth it or not so this package of seed probably costs like four dollars maybe five and i know i could get 50 times the five dollar package that i buy at the grocery store 50 times five 250 dollars worth of lettuce out of a five dollar salad package now am i going to get that kind of return on every single one of these seed packages no but i know at least for these i'm going to get 20, 30, 50 times the value if I have success with at least say 80% of the seeds that are in here. So this I know will have a huge return on my investment in these packages. The second group of seeds is from the brassica family. This is mostly plants like cabbage and kale and bok choy, radicchio, arugula is in here, radishes are in here too, but I'll talk about those separately, mizuna. So almost all of these minus say the cabbage, these are all cut and come again varieties. And even cabbage you could argue is cut and come again because you could literally cut the outside leaves and let the inner leaves continue to form the cabbage head. So each of these, let's take just this kale seed packet. This is gonna have probably 100 seeds in there. Kale seeds are the tiniest thing. I know I can get a good number of plants from this seed package, way more than I need to. And from each plant, I could probably harvest at least two leaves a week, at least. So I know, you know, if I go to the grocery store and I'm looking for organic kale, it's gonna be $4.99, something like that, for a bunch of, say, five or six leaves. So I know I could get that from just two or three plants out of this one seed package. So again, I know that I'm gonna get at least 30, 40, 50 times what I invest in this little seed package if I do it right. So if I plant this and harvest from it regularly, it is absolutely worth the money. Kale plants are biennials, which means they wanna go two years in the garden before they go to seed, which means they're gonna last so long in the garden. I can plant these as early as like January, February. They're gonna last me all the way till this time next year. So I could have them for over 12 months in the garden. In mild places like in Houston, where I started my first business, our kale plants last two years there. It's crazy. You really do get tons of growth and harvest from just a few seeds. In the same plant family, in the brassica family, are radishes. Radishes are different 
Now you can harvest the leaves, so you're gonna get a cut and come again experience from the radish. But the roots are a one-time thing, so you're gonna harvest those roots, and as soon as you do that, that's over, game over. But you know, a little bunch of organic radishes at the grocery, that's gonna probably be four or five dollars, and you would get one harvest for each of these seeds. So let's say this is probably, again, 100 seeds. So probably a hundred radishes for, I don't know, four dollars, five dollars, something like that. All right, moving on to the next plant family that I think is totally worth it is the amaranth plant family. And that includes Swiss chard, spinach, and also beets. So similar to the brassicas, you're gonna get cut and come again varieties from spinach and from Swiss chard. So all these plants you're gonna get to harvest from over and over and over again. Same kind of idea if you take a little box of spinach from the grocery, that's gonna be five, six dollars for the organic variety. You'll be able to harvest that much from a few of these seeds weekly for the period when they're growing, which is probably gonna be, I can grow these in the spring and again in the fall. Now, like the radishes, the beets are a one harvest harvest thing unless you harvest and use the leaves, which I highly recommend. So for each of these seeds, you're gonna get one beet. Well, actually beets are weird. Side note, beet seeds are actually like two or three seeds all together. So you actually might get, if you don't thin them out and they grow to full maturity, you might get like two or three beets for every single seed. Pretty crazy, right? Um, but same kind of idea, you can eat the greens, but you can also get one or two root harvests from each seed. Next plant family is the Apiaceae family. That's the carrot family. Carrots are gonna be like radishes and beets where you get one harvest from each seed, but you also get greens from the carrots, which you really don't get from the grocery store. Now carrots, I would say are probably a, what do you call it? An exception from like, for like saving a lot of money because I feel like carrots, I don't know about y'all, but I feel like I can buy like a huge, carrot bag from the grocery store for not very much money. And it takes a lot of space and also a lot of time to grow carrots. So I mostly just grow carrots, not for saving money or like getting a great value from my plants, but just because the flavor is so different when you harvest it right from the garden. It's so much sweeter and fresh tasting. It's so much like earthier, you know what I mean? I just prefer it. And I also like my kids love pulling carrots from the garden. So I do it as I love the taste and I know it's like so much more nutritious getting it right from the garden. So that's the carrot family. Also in here is cilantro, which is totally worth the, the seed package. You probably get like 40 seeds in here. And that's a cut and come variety, a cut and come again variety too. And then celery is in here. Celery is a plant that you have to wait a very long time for, like 90 to 100 days. So this is why I went ahead and bought these now so that I can get them started and hopefully have a harvest before summer. Let's see what it says, am I right? It says it sprouts in 15 to 20 days, but it does take a super, super long time to grow, at least every time I've tried it. This is another one. I feel like you can get organic celery pretty cheap at the grocery. So this is another one. I don't know if you necessarily get a lot of value out of it, but the taste and the quality is super high. Finally, the flowers. So flowers, I'm not growing to like, you know, save money or anything like that. I'm literally growing just for the enjoyment of it and for the ecosystem in my garden. So one of my major focuses of 2023 is going to be flowers. I wanna have so many more flowers in my pollinator and native garden space, and I wanna learn how to grow flowers better. So a lot of these varieties are for me to learn. As I grow these, I'm gonna to try to start them inside and move them out to the garden as the temperatures allow. So I'm especially excited for things like this, like this golden ball chrysanthemum. I mean, if I just get one little flower Flower from this seed, it's gonna be a, a miracle. All right, I promised you that I would tell you how you can save money on seeds, how you do not have to spend $300, though if you want to, you know, go for it. Okay, number one is to garden with a friend. Let me show you what I mean. One of these packages, like uh, this kale, okay? So it's not necessarily true for something like this where I'm gonna, I really wanna plant all these salad seeds and I'll use them all. I have a lot of other seeds like say tomatoes or peppers or squash where if you have like a kitchen garden like me, you don't have room to plant every single seed. And this is a great example like this dazzling blue kale. There's probably a hundred seeds in here. This is created for more like a farmer gardener. And I'm not a farmer gardener. I only have room probably for, you know, 10 kale plants at, at most. So if I get a couple of friends and we do like a, if we plan our gardens together, which is so much more fun anyway, then we could split all these seeds and split the cost too. So instead of spending 
five dollars and really only using say 20 percent of these seeds maybe not even i could have a little garden party with my friends and we could split the cost five ways so that is number one so many of these seed companies the way they're set up it's not really set up to sell to like the individual kitchen gardener it's really set up to sell more to like a farmer or like a homesteader kind of thing where they're growing tons and tons and tons of plants so that's tip number one to save money on seeds is garden with a friend and split these seed packages up together the second way to save money on seeds is to save seeds from your current garden or to be on the lookout for plants that are going to seed in public places so so many of our plants once you've grown them one time almost all of them you want to pick say the best variety the plant that's doing the best in that gar in your garden in that season and let that plant go all the way to seed if you do that with just one or two plants of each variety all you have to do is buy the seed package one time and then grow it all the way to full maturity let it go to seed and then you can gather that seed from that plant to use in coming seasons so you see it as like i'm spending five dollars this year but i'll never spend five dollars on kale seeds again now you can't do this with hybrid seeds hybrid seeds are not going to create a new plant that's true to the original one but for plants like this for heirloom seeds and open pollinated seeds you totally can do that so i see it not just as an investment like for this one season but as something that i can grow and save for many many years to come the third way to save money on seeds is to plan out your garden. So garden planning is essential, not just for success, but for not wasting money in the garden. So if you plan your garden out for the whole year, or at least for the coming seasons, that's going to keep you from over ordering, which is so easy to do for someone like me. So if you plan out your spaces, if you already know your raised beds you're growing in, or you already know your square footage, and you do some planning before you place your order, you're gonna be much more conscious of what's actually possible. If you're anything like me, you get into the seed catalog, you get online to the seed shop, and you just start like adding to cart. Like, it's just too hard to turn down something that likes so cool like you know like this little finger carrot you know and so if you do garden planning it's you know everybody says like planning is the answer to all of life's problems right but it really will save you so much money you're going to limit yourself to just order the things that you know can fit in your space for that season the fourth reason bonus way to save money on seeds is to save your seeds so if you order high quality seeds like these, then even if you don't use them all in one season, you can save them for seasons to come by protecting them. So seeds need to be stored in a place that doesn't have a lot of sunlight, that doesn't heat up, and that isn't going to be wet. So you want them in a dry, cool, low light place to save for the coming seasons. So as soon as you use these seeds up and you've planted everything you need for that season, you want to be sure that you store these correctly so that you can use them again in the coming years and not have to order them second time around. All right, so those are four ways that you can save money on your seeds. I spent $300 on my seeds so that you don't have to. By the way, all these seeds are from Baker Creek. This uh, video is not sponsored. If you want to sponsor me, Baker Creek, I'm here, but I love their seeds. Their seeds are one of the first ones that gave me great success in the kitchen garden. Family business, I love the way that they grow their seeds and I always have great success with them. So if you're looking for a great company, Baker Creek's one of them, I'll put more of my favorite seed companies down below. So tell me what you think. Was this worth $300? Tell me in the comments, I would love to hear. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to the Gardenary channel. I will love you for it and I'll see you in the next video.